Hey there, my potentially frustrated coffee lovers. It's Logan Maltese here with MajestyCoffee.com, and today I'm here to show you how to take apart your espresso grinder, specifically using a Eureka Mignon Specialita. Perhaps your grinder is jammed or stuck, or maybe you're just going through routine maintenance and you're kind of just a nerd like me. You want to get inside the guts and see what's going on in there. We're going to have a bit of everything in this video for you today, so stay tuned and let's get started. All right, so assuming you're joining me today because your grinder is jammed or stuck, first off, breathe. <laughs> Things are going to be okay. I know how frustrating this is as I've done almost a decade in coffee in various super busy cafe settings. You can almost lose your mind. So let's go through the steps together. I promise it's not as hard as it looks and it's actually quite fun. And in the future, you can be a little more prepared in cleaning your grinder before the jams happen. So situation one is you are grinding, you're maybe making some small adjustments and all of a sudden the grounds stop coming out. Now this could be a number of factors, some of which including you have coffee oils, coffee grounds built up, you have a large piece of a bean stuck in there, or perhaps you even have a rock stuck in there. Yes, an actual rock. Uh, <laughs> it's quite common for rocks to be shipped in with coffee. Most roasters will pick them out, but sometimes a few can slip through the cracks. So that being the case, we definitely wanna get inside our machine and figure out what's going on and what solution there is for you. And yes, in most cases, there is a solution and there's no need to be worried. So the first thing you want to do whenever you're experiencing grinder issues is stop grinding coffee, perhaps even switch off your machine entirely based on the severity of the situation. Next, what you want to do in most cases, you can potentially fix the problem by moving your grinder into a very coarse position. As you know, we should always make adjustments when running grounds through the grinder. Um, and in this case, if you perhaps made an adjustment a little bit finer when there weren't grounds coming out, you might have gotten your grinder stuck. So all we need to do is coarsen up your espresso. You wanna give a little more space between the burrs to allow them to be able to grind through whatever is the issue and slowly make your adjustments back to fine again. And remember, when you are grinding, and especially when you're moving your burrs closer together and making things finer, your machine gets hot. So you want to make these adjustments, but allow time if you can. If you're not in a busy cafe setting, maybe use another grinder in the meantime, just stop making espresso. Give your machine time to cool, especially in this case, the Eureka, fantastic machine as it is. You wanna make sure you don't overheat it or you will basically have to wait until it completely cools down to make any further adjustments. I would suggest if you do have the time, you stick with me and actually at least take off the top burr and kind of vacuum out the inside of your grinder to make sure you have everything cleaned out of there. At this point, since our grinder is putting out coarse beans, we want to just leave it on the coarse setting. Go ahead and very importantly, power down your machine and unplug it. You want to be absolutely sure you will not cause any damage to yourself. Alrighty, so I've got my machine unplugged and powered down. So next, we can start taking apart our grinder. Tools you're gonna need today are a Phillips screwdriver with a flathead attachment as well. You wanna have a set of Allen keys, some sort of brush. You wanna have a hard bristle brush and also a soft bristled brush. Uh, even just like a toothbrush can help you to dig through and clean out the grounds. All right, so first things first, close off your hopper. If you have a Eureka like I do, you wanna remove that screw on the back. Keeping track of all of the little screws and pieces and keeping them organized so that you know how to reassemble when it's time. All right, at this point you've removed the hopper. You can see the burrs down below. In this case, we have flat burrs. Your grinder may have conical burrs. So here you can see we've got lots of built up, just kind of beans, oils, etc., etc. So next we're gonna remove the Eureka logo, which should come off pretty easily. It's just kind of 
snapped on there. And you'll see there is a screw in here that we're gonna remove with our Phillips head screwdriver. As mentioned before, make sure you have a space set out or maybe a towel or a plate to put all of your parts. And at this point, the top should just lift right off. We're gonna take that off. There's also kind of a rubbery part in here that you can remove. Remove that there. You can see it, we're already getting ground spilling everywhere. That's totally fine. You're gonna remove that and you can easily clean that out. And when I say clean it out, I don't necessarily mean you have to go and rinse everything. I kind of just take my brushes, just give them a soft kind of brushing. You can run some compressed air through your machine. A lot of different ways we can softly clean. And then when we need to go in for more of a scrub, we use our hard bristled brush to kind of scrub in between those tight areas. All right, so at this point, you've taken the top off and you will see this. You have three screws here that you wanna take apart to get to that top burr. So we're just gonna take our screwdriver and they're pretty small, so you just wanna first loosen them with your Phillips screwdriver and then go in by hand so as not to lose these little screws. You should be able to lift up your top burr just like so. See there's quite a bit of quite a bit of grime in there, but nothing too bad. This is a fairly new grinder for me, so it should be pretty easy just to kind of brush most of that out. All right, so I've got that mostly, mostly all cleaned out there. It's looking a lot better. So another trusty tool for the job, just a vacuum with a hose and a long attachment arm so you can get down in your grinder. I'd recommend even going out and just buying a handheld one, even just from your thrift store. Basically just to have one dedicated vacuum that like stays nice and clean and can always help you quickly clean out your grinders. It's worth its weight in gold. Another great pro tip here is to just make sure your vacuum is completely empty and free of all dirt or dust bunnies because if you happen to lose a little part inside there it will be way easier to dig through and find that later. So at this point you can see the bottom burr. Take our vacuum cleaner with our hose attachment and kind of just vacuum out the grounds so as not to make a big mess when we pull that out. All right, so at this point, we're actually looking pretty clean, but I do notice a few bigger pieces of beans in there, perhaps leading to my blockage or clog. To remove your bottom burr, you will need your flathead screwdriver, as well as actually a wrench is quite helpful, a tool I forgot to mention earlier, just a household adjustable wrench so you can get a good grip and so your bottom burr doesn't move out of place while unscrewing those screws. Just gonna loosen those up slightly and then remove them after we loosen all three so that we don't lose any of them. This one's a little bit more difficult, but I think the wrench really helps Get a good hold there. All right, so I got all those loosened up and I'm just gonna carefully continue unscrewing them. These ones are pretty small, so if you have caffeine shakes like me, this could be a little bit of a frustrating part, but there's that for ya. These ones you definitely wanna keep in their own area with the bottom burr to ensure you don't lose them. All right, so at this point we got all those out. I actually freed up a few more grounds and I'm just gonna go in and kind of brush around here and see what else I can free up. I'm seeing some bigger pieces of beans that were probably causing me a bit of problems. So I'm gonna take my vacuum hose attachment in there and gather all those up right now.
looking much better in there. At this point, you're gonna need something to help lift out that bottom burr, whether it be a long flathead or kind of like a skinnier Allen key might do the trick. Just wanna be careful we don't really nick at them or cause any damage to them as they are very important in giving you consistent grounds. So you want a slight bit of pressure and also a little bit of kind of daintiness in your work per se to make sure you don't cause any significant damage. All right, so kind of going all the way around and just gently lifting up and you'll feel it start to give. There we go. Got that bottom burr here. Not looking too dirty, as I said, it's a little bit newer, but there is a little bit of clunkage on the side there. So we definitely wanna clean that out as well as when you look at the bottom here, you'll see a bit, a bit of built up coffee residue on mine. On yours, it could look a little bit worse if you've had more usage, obviously. And what we wanna do is just brush this burr out making sure to get in those screw holes and within all the teeth of the burrs. <sighs> if you just apply a little pressure, kind of like a teeth cleaning here, pretty fun. If you hate the dentist, but you love coffee, cleaning out burrs might be just the job for you. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with the results here. Looking pretty good. We got our top and our bottom burr there. And we wanna make sure to keep those screws organized and separate. So at this point, I wanna go in with my brush and just clean out the rest of the gunk in here. And go in with our vacuum again and just kinda of suck, up, suck up all of that coffee residue. All right, so we're looking pretty clean down there, looking pretty good. I am getting ready to just reassemble all of my bits and pieces, but first I just wanna quickly clean out the chute. Uh, there is a declumping mechanism in there, so you don't actually wanna shove anything down in there, but if you can just run some compressed air through there, it will clear out any blockage. Look up inside the chute, make sure there's nothing blocking it. All right, so we're gonna begin reassembling after clearing out that passageway. What you wanna do is align that bottom burr with the three screw holes. Here we go. Nice and aligned there. And begin pre-screwing with your hands. Then taking your flat head. Really can't stress enough how important it is to line up these screws with the hole took me quite a few tries the first time to actually get them to go into place because they're quite small holding down that center to go in and tighten everything as much as possible making sure that burr is nice and set in there there we go so we got those three screws in there Next, we're gonna reassemble our top burr. At this point, maybe just do one last brush if you're anything like me and got a little bit of coffee everywhere. Just gonna place that top burr back on top like so. Line up. Line up with the holes like so. There we go, tightening by hand first. And then going back in with our Phillips head screwdriver and tightening all the way. There we go. There we are. At this point, you can reconnect your rubber gasket piece lining up like so. And then replace the top piece, lining up all the lips, which should lock into place. 
very nice and gently. Should snap back on like that. We can put that screw back in. Replace our Eureka logo just to nicely cover up that screw. And at this point, before replacing my hopper, just gonna give that a nice cleaning out here as oils will collect. Yeah, we're just gonna get all that out there. A good practice to do on the daily. Gonna replace that with the screw hole lining up where the screw should go. Replace that screw here. Give it a little wipe. Voila, your brand new grinder. <laughs> Take some coffee. Re-plug into our outlet. Power back on. And moment of truth. And it definitely sounds a lot better from when I first experienced my uh, jamming. Basically, I left it in course, but at this point, we can slowly work our way back down to fine again uh, until we finally get our desired grind size for whatever you're brewing with. For me, it was espresso. As stated in the beginning, you wanna just do small adjustments with that as you go. Another way you could do this is before putting coffee in, run your grinder on course, tighten up your burrs until you get to fine and you'll hear the burrs hitting each other. It'll be a bit of a like shrill dee -dee 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 type noise. At that point, you can go back to course about another turn, a full turn back to course uh, and then put your beans in and then go back to fine. Now you have all the tools you need to do your routine cleaning. Suggested that you do it every few months. Uh, aside from that, just taking out your hopper and the top piece and vacuuming your burrs quite often with that vacuum hose is a great practice to get into. Some people do it nightly. Myself, I do it about once a week and it helps keep everything clean and clear and flowing beautifully. All right, well, that's all we've got for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Head over to majestycoffee.com to get grinders like the Eureka Mignon Specialita. Our customer support team is standing by should you need any assistance. Please leave us a comment if you have any questions, like this video and subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time.